God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. If there is one thing we have in common, those that have been born of a woman, Jesus said you must be born again. For a man that has been born of a woman, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. When a man has a false gospel, he has a false belief. And Paul has warned us that there is another gospel. An easy believism of gospel is an easy way to get into hell. Of a surety of thinking you're saved and you're not. There are lies out there, and it's a shame that lies come in the form of religion. The wrong Jesus will produce a religion, and the product of religion is death and hell. Because Paul again tells us there's another Jesus. And another Jesus will be far and preached on Sunday mornings. A Jesus that God is love and loves everybody is not a biblical Jesus. It's not a biblical God. A Jesus that you can take orally is sure not to be found in the pages of the Bible. A mode of salvation that gets you wet in a river are not in the pages of a King James Bible. Getting to God by what I do is a false religion and does not please God. Another thing we have all in common is we're going to die. The wages of sin is death. One day you will kick the bucket. You will close your eyes. You will die. The wages of sin is death. We are born into sin. We are born to die. And contrary to much belief of Americans, after we die, the entire world will not care about you. The entire world today doesn't even know about you. And yet, most of the world knows about the man I'm preaching, the Lord Jesus Christ. God manifested in the flesh, is preaching America, is preaching Mexico, is preaching South America, Asia, Africa, China. And for the very person that you are, that no one will hardly ever know and remember after your death. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <clears throat> not only we have death in common, but we have eternity waiting. And for some who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, be absent from the body and present with the Lord. 
if your salvation rests upon the merit in the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture if that is your means of salvation your eyes will close to this earth and they will be open to your God your Savior Jesus Christ Huh? And if you were to die without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will die, you will be buried, and you will wake up in a place called hell. And you will burn eternity in torments by the God that loves everybody. But by those who reject Jesus Christ, the only sin that will cast you into hell is by rejecting the love of God. Never mind what church signboards say, check what the Bible says. And the Bible says that you need the salvation of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You need or must be born again and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. God never established a religion. He established the way, the truth, and the light. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus Christ alone. You and I need a Savior. I have put my faith and trust in that Savior. We all have in common, we have a Father. Those that of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I have a loving, everlasting Father by Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Be holy for I am holy, speaks of God. I have a God that is unable, cannot, will not, and is never to produce a lie or think about a lie. That is the Father of those who have believed on Jesus Christ. Those who choose to reject or ignore the testimony and the salvation and the gospel of Jesus Christ has a father. That father is Satan. And when Jesus spoke 844 in the gospel of John, he was speaking to religious Pharisees. He says, you are of your father the devil. That father's lustful. That father's a murderer. That father is a liar and the father of lies. That father cannot give you mercy, grace, and truth, and life. That father will give you the lake of fire that burneth forever. Whereas God the Father will give you eternal life. No more pain, no more sorrow. If you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Death does not end it off. It may look like when you look at that dead body, well, that's it, their eyes are closed, they're laying there, it's done, it's finished. Not so. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit looked upon the sinful condition of man and said, that's not it for him when he dies. My judgment must fall upon mankind as a sinner. Unless there's an interdiction, there is no hope for mankind without God. For God so loved the world there's the love of God. 
There is a love of God. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to those who are born of a woman. He can't save dogs. He can't save whales. He's not going to save the platypuses. Those that are born of a woman, those are in the nature of Adam sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He did not give a priest. He did not give a rabbi. He did not give a Baptist preacher. He did not give water. He did not give biscuits and juice. He gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ left the throne of glory and came down, was born in Bethlehem. And as mankind, that human nature of God manifesting in flesh like me and you, he was born to die. The only thing Jesus Christ did not have that we have, he had no sin. But when he died upon that cross, he took on man's sins, Isaiah 53. He was bruised, he was whipped, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Our iniquity was laid upon him, the sins and filthiness of man was laid upon Jesus Christ on that cross that we may have life. And if you have the nerve to think that your contributions that you will list on the, your 1040 is able enough to save you outside of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for our sins, you're a fool. You would think that dollar dollars amount of money can outdo what the blood of God, Acts 20:28, has done. Nowhere does it say that God gave a river of water to be baptized to be saved. God gave baptism to be a witness, a public testimony that I had believed on Jesus Christ. God's love is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Jesus Christ left the heavenly throne of all the angels. Born on this miserable, rotten planet called Earth. And lived 33 and a half years. Sinless perfection without sin, tempted by Satan, tempted by his creation. He came into the world and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own rejected him. And we spend many years before salvation cussing the name of Jesus. And yet the Bible says, God is not willing that any should perish. The long suffering of God. You know, it is my desire. It is my hope that the Lord take me home. It is a Christian's true prayer the rapture will happen today. And yet, the long suffering of God says, no, not yet. Continue to preach the gospel to them. Continue to say that Jesus saved, that they may come to my son for eternal life. I am withholding for a while my plea to bring my bride home. I am withholding that, that those of the world may see the love of God being preached. People, that will not last forever. 
There is coming a time when God will tell Jesus, go get your bride. And many of you will sigh with a great relief that Saturday morning the preacher will not show up. You will not be harassed by little pieces of paper about God. The church will be called home. Until the church is called home, the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. It is far more important than a home run. It is much better to put an orange ball into the hoop. It is far better than 400 left hand turns. It's a ticket to eternal life through Calvary, through God, through Jesus Christ, who is God, by the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. You get upset by a little piece of paper talking about God and Jesus Christ, but you don't get upset about a little piece of paper that will tell you a guy will drive 400 times left-hand turns. And over the years, you've had cars crash into the van and people injured. But when you come to the little piece of paper that tells you about God and Jesus Christ, there is no crash. If you're to believe on Jesus, thou shalt be saved forever. And when that little piece of paper we are handing to you, if you're to believe on the Jesus that is spoken about in the Bible, angels celebrate, angels shout hallelujah, another name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, he took a football and passed it to the end zone. <sighs> Your sport, they don't allow them to bow the knee in God anymore. Don't bow that knee to God. And you're going to give up your Sunday for that. Now let me tell you something. There are no iron workers in the, in the Steelers team. There are no Cowboys in the Cowboy team. There are no 49ers on the 49 team. But there are born again Christians in heaven. And Christ rejectors in hell. There are two teams in eternity. There are Christ rejectors in hell. There are Christians in glory. And don't be too quick to apply Christian to your title because a Christian is one that has received Jesus Christ and not by eating Jesus, but by faith. If you eat Jesus, if you drink Jesus, you are a cannibal. They put you in jail. There are people in jail today for eating human flesh. You ought to lock up a religion that says eat this body. Because they say it's a literal body. I literally believe on the literal God manifested in the flesh, Jesus Christ, and I didn't eat nothing. Forget Mary. I've got the Son of God. There is no hope in the Pope. He's a sinner. But there is all hope in God, the sinless. And that love of God is upon those that have been born of a woman into sin of Adam's nature who are going to face life and going to face death. The world can give you life insurance. But the death insurance of Jesus Christ eternal. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. You may not know if the insurance company will pay off to your family. Whatever that insurance company, what if they fold up and dead once you die? But if you were to die in the, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's a sure. It is there. It will be always there by God receiving you through Jesus Christ.
God's eternal hope is through the blood of Jesus Christ, not through money. Look at America. There is no money in America anymore. We're dead. Your small G.O.D. and Trump in Washington, D.C. is ruining America more. But Jesus Christ will give you something better than America. He'll give you New Jerusalem. A city that will never break down. A city that's not built upon money. A city that's built upon Jesus Christ. And if you don't want to hear Jesus Christ, you will not enjoy heaven. Because it's all about Jesus Christ. There is no man publicly lifted up in New Jerusalem but Jesus Christ himself. Glory, glory to God in the Lamb, capital L, that sits on the throne. And by the way, after the church leaves, the Bible says there's going to be seven years of tribulation. Three and a half of them, great tribulation. And it's not for the Gentiles. If you're left behind, you will have the devil on earth. Hell will still await you. Do you think you've got trouble, troubles and problems? Wait to the tribulation period. When God removes his church, God removes his preaching, God removes his word. God removes the Christians. When God removes his Christians, it will be the devil on the earth. Laban saw that that wicked man saw that God was blessing him because he had a man of God working in his field. He had a man of God that was in his family, Jacob. The wicked Egyptian saw that God was blessing Abram. God is still working in America in a way because there are preaching, praying Christians. And I gotta be careful how I use the word Christian because you get a bad attitude thinking that you know Christians are saved. Not if you're not a Christian. And you're a liar as your father, the devil. Christians are ones that have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Christians are ones that adhere to God by the word of God. King James. Christians are saved by the blood. They don't drink it. America throws Christians like they throw sin. It's one of them religions that you will find too late. It's too wrong. There is the way of God and there is a way of Satan. The way of God turns you to God through Jesus Christ. The way of Satan turns you away from God by rejecting Jesus Christ. Or by having another Jesus. As Paul has said. You know, there are some people out there. They live their lives. And at some point late in their life, they realize, wait a minute. You were not my parents. You adopted me, or I had another mother I didn't know. And many of you in religion will learn one day, oh, I have the wrong father. I've always had the wrong father. In most cases, you will learn that too late. When your father, the devil, joins you into the lake of fire. That's too late. And he's not even going to apologize to you. I mean, isn't it great that mankind, when, when we do an innocent offense, that we can truly say from our heart, I I'm sorry, I didn't know. And yet your father, the devil, will never apologize anything to you when you're burning with him in the lake of fire. Because he's not going to be sorry, because that's what he wants to do. 
There is no mercy given by Satan. Grace is not found in hell. But by the love of God through Jesus Christ. You can give all your money to the church. Give 40, 50, 60, 70 years to the church. What's that going to do for you in eternity? You'll be bankrupt, burning in hell. Because you have not put your stock in the eternalness of the blood of God. You put it on the Abraham Lincolns, the, the Benjamin Franklins, the George Washingtons, the Thomas Jefferson. They can't save your soul. Probably they're maybe in hell today too. Probably. I don't know. The blood of Jesus Christ does not ever devaluate. That dollar is not worth a dollar. But the blood of Jesus Christ is, is worth eternal praise, eternal salvation, eternal glory to honor to God who shed his blood. And I can only imagine eternity only gets better and better and better and better. And I can't say as the years go by because there are no years in eternity. While you have rejected the message, you have rejected the preaching that you hear today, and you go for eternity of no years, of no time, tormented in the lake of fire that burneth forever. And the sorry thing about going to hell, and I'm not talking about no dark area of Africa. I'm not talking about the, 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 the areas of China. The sorry thing is in the streets of Daytona Beach at the farmer's market to go to hell when you have heard that Jesus saves. When you have heard how God can get you out of hell and you reject it, you dismiss it. You pass off, oh, he's only going to be here for 45 more minutes, and then he's gone. And what happens in that, after that 45 minutes, if your eternal life begins, and it begins in hell? What if today is the day that you close your eyes to this world? Where are they going to be open to? Are you assured? These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I don't mean burning candles. I don't mean I'm not sure. I don't mean I think so. I know for sure. My eyes will open to God in heaven. Assurity. Assurity is in the Word of God, the King James Bible. Don't tell me my friends will burn candles. They will pray money to the priest. They may not love you enough to do that. They may not be able to do that with the economy of America. In the pages of the Bible, there is no purgatory. In the pages of the Bible, there is no merry worship. In the pages of the Bible, there is no Baptist church. And when Paul met the man, he says, I was baptized with John's Baptist. Paul expounded the word of God more better to him. And he received Jesus Christ as his Savior. And no longer the baptism. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not should have everlasting life. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not 
wrath the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And if their names were not found written in the Lamb's book of life, they were cast off in the lake of fire that burned forever. That's eternal life in a nutshell. And you are the nut if you don't come to Jesus Christ. You're going to face death. You will not avoid death. Death is coming. And if you die without your faith in the gospel that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. If you die in that faith of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, you'll be absent from the body, present with the Lord. But if you reject Jesus Christ, you will be buried and you will wake up in a place called hell. Both are eternal. Both without end of blessings and mercies by Jesus Christ forever or torments, tormented, tormentings by rejecting Jesus Christ. It's your choice. Your mom can't do it for you. Your spouse can't do it for you. You've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to be born again. God says, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Come on! <laughs> that preacher, preacherette, whether you go to church, or it's television, or radio, put a little dash or mark on a piece of paper every time he quotes from the Bible. That you can open the Bible to that place and quote, and follow with your eyeballs in the Bible. Put how many times with a little tally mark when he does that. And you'll be quite shocked. And salvation is purely out of the Word of God, the Bible. Man makes up a word, it's called religion. Religion is abound in the land of the Quran. In the land of the Quran, you color outside the lines, you end up in hell. And that religion would hate me to say that. That religion would love to take off my head because I mock their word. And yet four years, here at the farmer's market, when I preach the word of God, when I preach about Jesus, you get upset, you say things, you get angry, you reject Jesus, and I yet preach still the gospel. I don't try to seek revenge like a religion. If I were to speak against a Pope or Mary, that church would want to kill me. They have. It's called the Inquisition. It is time when the church killed Christians. Because they would not take that bread or that wine as the God. Why does religion get so upset? You come up to me. You got religion. You don't have the truth. Other no, people come up, man, brother, thank you very much. We love you. That's a Christian. So don't come up here. That's not what Jesus would do. Yeah, I tell you, you don't read the Bible. You know nothing. You don't know Jesus. Because this is exactly what Jesus would do. Jesus interrupted a beach one day to preach about the parable of the sower. Jesus sat on a mount, and everybody knows the Sermon on the Mount. I, I, wait a minute, it's not the sermon in the church. And everybody heard him. And I can imagine.
to somebody going, to, you're too loud. They probably went to Jesus. That's not what Elijah would do. You would find Elisha doing that. Who do you think you are, God? You think you are, God? I am. Get the stones. <laughs> you know, when Jesus proclaimed to be God, they were going to stone him according to the law. The law that the Jewish people follow, follow obey, said if any man says they're to be, be a God, they were to stone him. That's exactly what the Jews tried to do. So don't tell me Jesus never professed to be God. One day those rocks will cry out that were in their hands. Yeah, he's done it. And they were going to take me and throw me at Jesus. The Bible says one day those rocks are going to cry out. You've got to know that Jesus is the way. That's it. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That Jesus was... Oh boy, I shouldn't say this. But Jesus was non-denominational. He wasn't a Baptist Jesus. We're having a fellowship. He wasn't an Episcopalian Je Jesus. He wasn't a Catholic Jesus. Here, here's a fork and a knife. Have a thigh. He wasn't a Pentecostal Jesus. Ah! He wasn't a Muslim Jesus. Take off their heads, Peter. Oh, no, Peter, put that sword away. I got to fix the guy's ear. I'm going to the cross, Peter. I'm going to shed my blood, Peter. Some of you don't even know an idea what I'm saying. But if I tell you veggie tales, if I were to tell you uh, uh, those other nonsense by those writers supposed to be Christians about rings and all that other nonsense, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. A shame you don't know the Bible. A shame you don't know the Bible stories and you go to that church and you don't know the stories of Peter trying to take off a man's ear. He took off the man's ear and Jesus rebuked him. What do you think he's going to do to Muslims? They didn't take off an ear, they took off the whole head. How about the Catholic Church? They tortured Bible-believing, saved Christians over a piece of wafer, devil's food cake, an intoxicating hooch, which is called spirits, where I grew up. Yeah, it's got spirits, all right. And Paul said, there was another spirit. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you're either going to be an alcoholic or you're going to be a Catholic. Holy. Holy dedicated to the Catholic Church. Holy dedicated to my baptism. It is my church that saves me. And when you die, you find out you were wrong. And that's not the time to be wrong. Salvation rests upon Jesus. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And yet love, joy, peace comes eternally by Jesus Christ. Notice how often I mention Jesus. Notice how often, although I may not quote completely from the scripture, but notice how often it comes from the scripture. It comes from the writing of the Holy Spirit. And yes, God used man. Your textbooks are written by man. <laughs> the man that I preach. The way of salvation that's being preached has been the salvation of the ministry of Jesus Christ, of his death, of his burial and resurrection, of his ascent to God the Father at the right hand, of Peter, James, and John going out, of the Apostle Paul, Barnabas, Silas, 
Mark, Matthew, and to the early Christian church it comes forth to today. That is only Jesus Christ and nothing else. Anything added to God's salvation of Jesus Christ is an artificial additive, and no one likes artificial additives. We want the pure, 100% natural, and that's Jesus Christ. I mean, would you go to one of these tables and buy wax apples for your meal? And yet you will buy wax apples for a meal from your religion. And wax apples do not delight you. And a wax, stone, wood, whatever kind of Jesus is not going to get you to glory. That Jesus that's hanging between your breasts is half of Jesus. Because that Jesus nailed to the cross. My Jesus came off the cross and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If your church still has Jesus on the cross, that's a third of the gospel and that will get you a third more way into hell. Up from the grave he arose, not up from the grave we look for eggs. There is no hope in Santa Claus. There is no hope in the Easter Bunny. There is no such thing. But all there is of Jesus. And he's alive and he's well and he's not on the cross today. <coughs> and he's sure not in a manger. See the baby Jesus you can control. That baby Jesus can do whatever you want to do with him. God manifests in the flesh as a dough. If you nail him to the cross, you can do anything you want with him. He ain't going to go nowhere if he's nailed to the cross. But if God manifests in the flesh and died for our sins according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the flesh, now God's in control. And God is in control to the fact is if you will not believe on him, you will be cast into hell. That's the control of God. And when you reject Jesus Christ, you are rejecting the love of God. There is no more love of God when you reject Jesus Christ. He hates the sin and hates the sinner. Put that on a bumper sticker. Tell your smiling preacher with his pearly white teeth. Give him a coronary. Give him to a Baptist shock. You know, Christians that are saved are going to be totally amazed when they meet Jesus one day. I mean, the Bible just, but still the Bible leaves holes on who what Jesus is really. I cannot draw a picture of Jesus. But I'm going to see him by faith. Those of you who have not rejected, reject, those who have rejected Jesus Christ, you're going to get a far worse picture of Jesus. You're not going to see that loving, peaceful Jesus. You're going to see the angry lion of God, Jesus. The one that's sitting on the throne. Now the Bible says the judgment seat of Christ, but it never really says that Jesus is on the seat. It says judgment seat. But I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. Without Jesus Christ, you will face the judge, Jesus Christ. And he will judge you harshly by the word. By the word that you did not receive him as your savior. So now let's lay up the works. And your works will never come to, will never equal to the finished work that Jesus Christ has done. It's plain and simple. 
You could not give God enough if you were to buy your salvation. If you could purchase your salvation. I'm trying to think of a verse in the Bible that says, with the price of the man's soul, I can't think of it. What will a man give for exchange for his soul? Thank you, Lord. I got an old brain. What will a man give for exchange for his soul? U.S. dollars? Are you really sure that U.S. dollars are going to buy you to heaven when the Bible is Hebrew? And the Hebrew way is talents and gold and silver. You have no gold. You have no silver. Franklin took it away, and uh, Roosevelt took it away from you. You think God would use the standard of America when he came under his own Jewish people? He was born of Jewish people? He was born of the seed of David in this land of Israel? And you think that your American ways is going to equal to a Jewish God? Really? It's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, not Japheth. Not ham. So, if you could buy your way to heaven with money, what type of money would God use according to the Bible? It would be have to be Hebrew. Gen I, Gen Hebrew, I was going to say Hebrew, Gen Hebrew money, Jewish money. Which one? There was a Jewish money unit. And there was a Jewish Roman money unit. Temple money. Roman money. Abraham had no money. He used gold and silver and, and weighed it out. You think God takes checks? Where's the tellers in heaven? I can see God standing at the bank. Yeah, I got to cash this check from this guy. Sure ain't gonna use plastic after Black Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're so overdrawn in your credit debt, if you could use your credit card, you still owe. How about works? What can you do that would equal what Jesus Christ done on Calvary's cross? I mean, is there a menu board in heaven like you find at McDonald's? Hamburger, $1.99, cheeseburger, $2.05, soft drink, $0.85, cents, coffee, $0.25. Is there a menu board? Adultery, uh, this, and stealing, you do that, and lying costs this. Is there that? There's not that in heaven. That's all upon the blood of Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross. All have sinned. All oh, have come short of the glory of God. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's that simple. We're all sinners. I have lied at least once to my mom and dad. At least once. I'm a sinner. I have stolen from my parents. At least once. I'm a sinner. And accept the mercy of God, I will I would have died and gone to hell before April 21st, 1987. April 21st, 1987 is when I received Christ. And that moment I received Christ from September 6, 1968 to April 21st, 1987, it was all put through the blood of the Lamb. And he took away my sin. He washed me. He cleansed me. He gave me the Holy Spirit. I became a child of God. My name was written in the last book of life. I have reservations in heaven today. And they were signed, sealed, and delivered on April 21st, 1987. So when it's time to go from this earth, and I go to check in, 
I would not dare say, God, look at all the preaching I've done. I have not preached as much as Moody. I have not preached as much as Whitehead. White House. White. I have not preached enough to get me into heaven. I have not done good enough when the Bible says there is none that doeth good. My reservations in heaven when I walk up to God and say, God, by your son, by his death, by his burial, by his resurrection, that he is the way, the truth, and my life. I have the son, God. And I can enter into your presence because my name is in the last book of life. Well done, thou good. I won't even say faithful servant because I don't even think I'm a faithful servant. Well done. That's what I'm going to get. To get into heaven by Jesus Christ, well done. Not better being well done in hell and fire. No, in hell and fire you get Jesus telling you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But God was Catholic, I never knew you. God, look what I did. I never knew you. Lord, I believed on Jesus Christ. Well done. Saved by the blood. Well done. Look at my checks. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I was baptized, God. You're going to wish you had some of that water. If religion can save your soul, why are there so many religions? People ask me that question all the time. It's true. How about there's one way, Jesus Christ? There's one way, Jesus Christ. There's one truth, Jesus Christ. There's one life, Jesus Christ. How's that? You become a Christian not by what you do, but what Christ has done. How's that? It, it would be nice if God did let everybody to heaven. But then heaven would be like this earth today. <laughs> You'd be having wars over there, wars over here, poverty over there, and uh, taxes over there. That's not what heaven's like. Heaven's the pure worship of the one that suffered and died for us. How's that? Heaven's about God and God's Son. Hell is about you rejecting God. There's no party in hell. There's no joy. There's no love. There's no booze. There's no friendship in hell. There's torments. Forever. Oh, there's love, joy, peace in heaven forever. But that's attainable by Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and Jesus' resurrection. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The word of God's eternal. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Vendors have come and vendors have gone. But the word of God remains still. Satan's music has come and gone. But the word of God is still. And if one day we were to stop or go home to glory, and you're not getting any more preaching. The Word of God is still bound. It's still bound to heaven. Though the Word of God in history has been bound to pulpits, they have tried to stop that Word. They tried to burn that Word. They tried to chain that Word. 
Here it is again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I didn't even open the word to read it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I've got the Holy Spirit in my heart today by Jesus Christ. And that Holy Spirit in me alarms me when I've sinned. You weren't supposed to do that. That was wrong. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. All I'm doing here is telling you about the gospel and giving you a public testimony of how Jesus saved my soul. That's it. And you get so angry. You get so hostile because I praise Jesus and not my great sex acts from this weekend. Or how wonderful I got so sick on drinking like an idiot. I don't need your worldly ways. I've got the heavenly way, Jesus Christ. I'm intoxicated with Jesus, and it didn't cost me nothing. I am addicted to the Word of God, the Bible says. And such great joy and peace. How about you? How's your whiskey doing? Is it doing a good job? Two, three days after you haven't had any whiskey? Huh? How's it doing? How's that dope? You're the dope for doing dope. How you doing? Is it satisfying you? Does your provider give you free dope? Because my provider of salvation gives me free. Love, joy, peace. How's it going? How is your sin? Let's say that. How is your sin doing when you sin against God? How's it going? There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Let me go to the book of Psalms. Let's do the Bible. You find it. Windy. Alright, Psalms. Alright. Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. Now let me quote the world for you. Let me quote religion. Okay? God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. Quoted by an idiot. I don't know what his name was. The guy was an idiot. Because here's what the Bible says, Psalms 7, 11. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. How's that? Psalms 711. Think of the convenience store. Everybody loves their psalms. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Salvation belongeth, belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings are upon thy people. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. 
Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. That's not Bible. Tell your preacher that. You tell them the book of Psalms. You give them my name, I'll tell your preacher if you're afraid to. God is not with sinners. Read your Bible. The only way to get right with God is to come to Jesus Christ on your knees and in faith and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's the only acceptable way of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That rules out your religion. Unity in religion brings you to hell. You don't like it? That's tough because God don't like it. God does not approve. When we preach Jesus, God says, I approve of that message. You're going to die. Do not do it without Jesus Christ. That man is so loud. So is your ballpark announcer. So are some of the radios that come from these cars. I'm not loud enough. I wish God would give me a voice that all Daytona could hear. Because I know right now all Daytona Beach is not getting the gospel like you. You should feel privileged by God. Because you're hearing about Jesus. Somewhere in Daytona, they're talking about nonsense. They're talking about politics, nonsense. They're talking about sports. Nonsense. They're talking about their great weekend. Nonsense. They're just talking foolish. Foolishness. Here, you're hearing about Jesus. Wisdom. Perfection. The glory of God. You're, you think you're going to heaven, and yet you hate the preaching that you're hearing now. No, sorry. Your heart's not in the right place. How can you think you're okay with God when you hate what the preaching God has for you? I mean, that's why God calls it foolishness. Let me use a word I try to use every day, stupid. I use the word stupid today. You're stupid without God. You're stupid without Jesus Christ. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Book of Psalms, twice. Well, I wouldn't say that. Are you saying Jesus Christ is God, man, the flesh and the flesh, and he's able to save your soul? Well, no. Then you said there's no God. Jehovah Witnesses. The fool has said in his heart there's no God. They don't say Jesus is God. The Bible says you're a fool. Hey, I'm just trying to tell you the truth. If I gotta kick it, I'll kick it. Because I don't want you to get in religion. I want you to get in Jesus. Religion is in hell, Jesus is in heaven. There's a far gap. And the only gap that will get you from hell to Jesus is Jesus. And you gotta be warned. Because Paul says there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit. I want to make sure you get the right one. No, no. No, you are. Your pastor may tell you the wrong one. No, we're not gonna make it. Your church may lead you the wrong way. Your science may have you believe in the planet of apes. Monkey men who couldn't use Rogaine but didn't.
And here we are today. I know when you, when you said better on the fact of evolution, it's a lie. It denounces in the beginning God created heaven and the earth. Now, one day God made the cows, He made the rhinoceroses, He made the apes, He made the monkeys. He made the day when you go to a zoo, He made, the, and on another day He made man. Man and apes were not made on the same day. Yes, apes are older than men by one day. Apes were the fifth day, man was on the sixth day. It's not millions of thousands of billion years, it's one day. God said, I'll make man in my image. God is not a monkey. You be a monkey's uncle. I be a child of God and you can be a child of God too by dropping the monkey religion and coming to Jesus Christ who is not religion. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's that simple. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days because I have believed on Jesus Christ. I am washed in the blood of Jesus at Calvary. Wonderful, great hymns about God. You want to hear a song about from Satan? I write the songs. They make young girls cry. Look at the lyrics and compare that to Satan. See what happens. The filthy, perverted music of Satan. And yet the wonderful, blessed song. The, word, the songs of Satan promote flesh, drinking, smoking. The wonderful hymns of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Greatest name I know. I was blind, but now I see. Not only is that a hymn, but that's in the Gospel of John. Some of your hymns come right out of the Bible. Many of your worldly songs come right out of hell. That's where Satan is. It's where he's going. It's where his being is. Hell is real. Heaven is real. There is a Satan there is no Satan Claus. There is a Jesus. There's no Easter Bunny. The God that gave you the fruits and vegetables, whether you're buying or selling, that same God that gave you those vegetables is the same God that gave us Jesus Christ. You will receive those vegetables, but you will not receive God's Son. And the vegetables are not a gift because you paid for them. And the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, and that's free. I'll take some of those tomatoes. I'll take some of those cucumbers. Would you like a bag for that? Yeah, here. You don't put Jesus in the bag. You put Jesus on through the Holy Spirit that dwells in your heart. And true salvation will not make you want to shut up. Man, my body wasn't so thrilled, wasn't so broken down. I'd preach all day till you closed up. My legs, my legs were so worn, I'd be here all day preaching to you about Jesus. If my throat didn't dry up, if my lips didn't get tired, I'd preach Jesus all day. But thank God one day when I get to New Jerusalem, I'm going to do that all the time. With a body that's brand new that will not break down. Come on, old man. How's evolution doing for you? You getting better? Huh? 
If evolution is true, why do we need band-aids? All of, what, 4,000 years of human being? Y'all thought we don't need a flu shot? How come our immunity has not caught up to the flu virus? How many black bears did die before they became white bears in the polar region? Stop dragging the whales back out to sea. They're trying to grow legs and walk off and start a humanity. Why can't the manatees save themselves? You can't save yourself. You need Jesus Christ. If they're so stupid to go somewhere where they're not supposed to be, well, fine. You can save whales, you can save manatees, but you can't save your soul. You got your priorities wrong. The priority is in a human soul. What will a man give for exchange of his soul? It's not saving whales. A whale ate a man in the Bible one day and God said, okay, spit that guy out. Oh, he's good, spit him out. Oh, that story's a lie. It wasn't really a whale. But yeah, see? I believe Jonah is real. I believe I'm going to meet Jonah. And I'm going to meet those people of Nineveh that got saved that afternoon. You would love a Jonah preacher. What was it? Come in here, preach seven words, was it? That's it. How about I came in, you're all going to go to hell and burn. And go sit underneath a tree. That's what Jonah did. <laughs> Pretty much. Windy. Hey, look at that. My fingers went right to Jonah. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 2, verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into a city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That was it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. No Jesus and no God. He came in and preached eight words. I come here and preach an hour about Jesus. Let's see what Nineveh did. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Well, they're better than Daytona. And proclaimed a fast. And put on sackcloth from the graves of them to the least of them. And the word came unto the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him. And covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Who can tell if God will turn to repent and turn away from his fierce anger, but that we perish not? Eight words from an angry preacher and the nation got saved. I, I, probably not all. But the Assyrians are better than you Daytonians. The Syrians believe God and got right. Thank you, man. Jeremiah, learn not the ways of the heathen. <laughs> Save the mermaids. The people of Syria did better than the people of Daytona Beach. And they were a wicked people. They were vile. And when it came to war, they were just without mercy. Listen, God can save a Muslim. 
God can save a Catholic. God can save a Baptist. God can save an American. But as an American, if you will not come forth, God's not going to save you. Isaiah. Isaiah. Forgive me, it's a little windy here in the Bible. Isaiah 20, Isaiah 1, 12. Let's see what the Bible says. A Bible. Hey, this may be the only Bible you're going to get this year. Isaiah chapter 1. I can stop the wind. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, King James Bible. Happy New Year. Come now and let us reason together. That's God talking to you. The God that said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. It's the same God that says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. No American believes they're a sinner. I'm not going to come to God. I'm going to go to a drug. I got the great cup here, my God. Ain't going to do you no good when you die. Republican and Democrat can't get you out of hell. They're probably there with you. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's you. And you. And you. And you. And me. Yes, me. I'm a sinner saved by grace. How about you? The same God that gives you those vegetables is the same God that gives you eternal life through Jesus Christ. You've got to receive it. Would it not be a stupid thing for you to buy a whole box of fruit or vegetables, say, here's my money, and walk away without taking it? Wouldn't that be foolish? I bought a whole flat of tomatoes, but where are they? They're left behind. Look at all the watermelons I got. Where are they? Oh, I didn't take them. Hey, let me buy those green beans, but I'm not going to take them. And God said, here is my son, the payment of sin, purchased with God's blood. I'm not going to take it. That's foolish. That is foolish. Who would go to a grocery store and leave what they paid for behind? And yet you do that with the payment of God for your sins. You'll put more faith in a lottery ticket then you will in God's Son. I don't know how odds work. I don't have the understanding of odds. But I know one thing. If you're to believe on Jesus Christ, you'll 100% go to heaven. How's that for odds? I don't know the 1 in 20. I don't understand that stuff. But I know 100% will get you to heaven by Jesus Christ, who said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Dogs cannot be saved. Whales cannot be saved. Santa's not real. I don't know how to get everybody all upset today. But Jesus Christ is real. 
Jesus Christ came to save the soul of man. Yeah, there's love of God. John 3, 16. That love of God is at Calvary. That love of God is upon the cross. The love of God is Jesus Christ. The gift of God is Jesus Christ. And you reject it. You turn away from it. Did you reject any gifts from Christmas? But you reject the gift of God which gives us eternal life. And then you proclaim that you want the love of God. The love of God is Jesus Christ. You rejected the greatest gift ever to be given by God. Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation dropped in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way outside of Jesus Christ. If you reject Jesus Christ, you will go to hell, and there is no party in hell. It is tormenting, according to the Bible, the Gospel of Luke. It is darkness, according to Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. And he came that your soul may not go to hell. Your friends tell you to go to hell. We as friends tell you not to go to hell. We offer to you God's eternal life. And that eternal life is in Jesus Christ. We have done what the Bible proclaims to do. We preach the gospel. Christ, God, has done what they were to do. God gave His only begotten Son. The Son came and suffered and died, according to the Scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Now the decision is yours to believe or to reject. That's on your behalf. And if we reject Jesus Christ, God, though the love of Jesus Christ will cast you into hell. If you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven. Heaven's by Jesus Christ. Hell is by anything and everything but Jesus Christ. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. Driving on the wrong side of the road. Death is coming. That's the most sure thing in the world is death. We just don't know when. If you do death through Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.